It's the Drunk Turkey Show. Welcome back, y'all. So today's main topic of what we're going to be talking about is the uh, the letter and the response from Roberta Laundry, um, mother of deceased um, killer of Gabby Petito, Brian Laundry. Um, and for those that aren't familiar, I'm, I'm sure many of you guys are. The, uh, the 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 breakdown is in 2021, Gabby Petito went on a trip with her fiance Brian Laundry. They converted a van into a living, like a mobile mobile living area, uh, you know, house on wheels, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And we're trying to be content creators, create a YouTube channel, and you know, show video of them living their lives out of the van. Um, Petito went missing in September of twenty of twenty twenty one. Um, laundry returned back home. Um, uh, Brian Laundry had returned back home her fiance without her, sparked a bunch of rumors, a bunch of questions, a bunch of thoughts. Um, people were wondering where Gabby Petito was at. Uh, her body w- was found. Brian Laundry went missing. He ended up taking his own life. And um, out of this entire search, there was a letter that was found at the end of this. And there was a letter from Ro- Roberto Laundry to Brian Laundry. And it's come as being the biggest, you know, um, clue as far as did the did the laundry parents know that Brian Laundry had this, you know, committed that heinous crime against uh, Gabby Petito before her body was found? You know, were they aware during that two week span he was back and and everybody was looking for it before her body was found? And uh, in fact. The uh, Petito family is now suing the Laundry family, including their lawyer, over them knowing that um, Gabby had been deceased and that Brian was responsible for it and weren't coming forward. Uh, are you familiar with the case, Blue? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty familiar with it. All right, awesome, awesome. Now, I know there's a lot of stuff in between there, but that's just kind of the ballpark. You know, summary of it. Um, the letter has been found. The kids are accusing the laundries of knowing about the uh, the crime uh, or what had occurred while Gabby was still missing. And this is a response or an article with the response from Roberta Laundry uh, referencing that letter. So this comes from um, News Channel Eight. Roberta Laundry is speaking out for the first time about a letter she wrote to her son, Brian Laundry, that she claims has nothing to do with Gabby Petito, but rather a quirky letter she wrote to help repair the relationship. Roberta's attorney finds a motion for a protective order in the Sarasota County Circuit Court on Monday, seeking to block the attempts by Petito's parents, Joe Petito and Nicole Schmidt, uh, to make a make the burn after reading letter written to Brian Laundry admissible as evidence in the upcoming civil trial between the two families. The attorney Petito and Schmidt claim that the letter makes reference to a shovel burying a body and helping Brian get out of prison. We have the opinionated idiot 199. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, buddy, for your uh, super chat. We're going to be on his show on Thursday night, y'all. If y'all haven't uh, checked him out, Check them out. Like and subscribe. You'll see us there Thursday. Um, in support of the notion against the letter becoming public, Roberta Laundry wrote a letter to the court claiming the burn after reading letter was a was written months before Gabby and Brian left on their cross country road trip in the summer of 2021. Although I do not know the exact date I wrote the letter, I do know that I wrote it and gave it to Brian before. Brian and Gabby left Florida for New York, which was on June 2nd, 2021. Uh, said Roberta. Roberta says that she and Brian shared a love for books such as The Runaway Bride, Runaway Bunny, and Little Bear. She claims one such book, Burn After Writing. Blue, can you do me a favor real fast? Can you look up what Burn after, a summary of Burn After Writing is and what that book is about? Um, <clears throat> so Burn After Writing was often a subject, a joke between her, Brian, and Gabby, and was the reason she wrote Burn After Reading. On the envelope that contained the letter to her son. In short, I was trying to connect with Brian and repair our relationship as he was planning to leave home and he hoped this letter would remind him how much I loved him, said Roberta. Stephen uh, Stephen Bertolino, the longtime family attorney of the Laundries who is seeking 
to be removed as a co-defendant in a lawsuit has previously said burn after reading letter Roberta wrote to Brian was personal between mother and her son. Roberta, Roberta in her letter to the court says the note Brian was an attempt to repair their strained relationship. Okay. The purpose of the letter was to reach out to Brian while he and I were experiencing a difficult period in our relationship. Roberta wrote, Brian and I always had a very open and community relationship. And in the months prior, to <clears throat> our relationship had become strained. Brian and I share love stories, uh, love of stories and some of the language in the letter are using familiar phrases to describe the depth of the mother's love. Did you find that book there, boy? Yeah. What's that book about? Um... It's a self-discovery book that encourages you to the reader to ask yourself where you come from, where you are now, and the, ultimately just where you are going. It's like six bucks on Amazon. And let's see, this is the author talking about it because she wrote another book. Mm -hmm. The soul looks to continue the journey of self-reflection by asking just who you are really and are you how <clears throat> and how those are shape for your life think of it as your self therapy both books begin with a journey right here at the kitchen table uh, that's pretty much it and then it talks about the spare time that you have so it really doesn't have anything to do with shovels getting out of jail like no, just like a self-reflection book all right all right so Okay. Okay. So Roberta admits that her letter does contain references that some would think about her son and, and Petito. However, she claims there is no connection between her words and what happened to the couple. Um, well, I used words that seem to have a connection to Brian's actions and the taking of Gabby's life. I never would have fathomed the events that unfolded months later between Brian and Gabby would reflect in my words, in my letter, the words in my letter, the words in the letter could never have been comment of the tragic situation as they were written so many months before. My words to Brian were meant to convey my love and support for my son, though a lighthearted and quirky reminder that my love for him was not diminished and could not be shaken by the miles of separation we would soon be faced with. So I don't understand where when she comes with this and she says that, you know, and, and, and well, that's, you know, if we were to believe the rumors that are out there that um, or what the speculation is that that's out there is that there's talk about burying a body. There's talk about, um getting out of jail um a shovel where does those those phrases in your opinion blue come in that you think that talk about love and support for their son and try to get over some sort of you know um strain that they were having in the relationship yeah that part i don't get like it's not doesn't come it doesn't sound like a letter for that but I was watching a report saying that, I mean, the FBI have the letter. They have mm -hmm. it, in, in their, but they're not going to release it. And I don't think they're even going to use it towards the case because they find it ir irrelevant right now. Well, they're going to use it in the civil lawsuit that's going on between the Laundry family and the uh, uh, Petito family. So the Petito and Schmidt family, which is um, Gabby's mom and dad, are suing uh, Roberta and her husband a laundry for um they're, they're going through a civil lawsuit and their claim is that they were under that they knew um while gabby was missing uh, that she had been deceased and that and that brian had something to do with it and were not not reporting that to authorities gotcha. and so that's why it's it's relevant still but yeah the fbi does have the letter i believe um, uh, let's see, let's go. Roberta says the claim made by Pat Riley, the attorney for the P Petito's parents, that the letter was received by Brian and found in his backpack by the FBI near his remains at the Carlton Re Reserve is false. Roberta says the FBI gathered the letter as evidence before Brian's remains were found and investigators had questioned her and her husband, Chris Laundry, about it before October of 2021. And so, um, you know what this sounds like to me? This sounds like uh, like he came home. Maybe he uh, he told he told his parents what had happened, and uh, and then he shut everything out. I think he made his decision that he was going to take his own life at that point, 
And I don't think he was talking to his mom or his dad about anything. Yeah. And I think that that letter was an, an, an attempt to prevent what inevitably happened to Brian Laundrie in that, in that 25,000 acre reserve. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Yeah, man, I, I know he was going through some stuff. I know he had it, told his parents something. Yeah. It was, it was crazy how the story was. He abandoned the van. He abandoned everything. And they found him walking the side of the road. And he didn't know where she went, you know. So it's a crazy story when I, when I heard that one. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, yeah, it, it's that's what it sounds like to me. It sounds very much like he came out with it and was in severe you know depression understood what was going to happen to him as well and um probably regretted what he did you know this is probably an act that occurred out of rage and and whatnot and so I, i'm sure he was thinking about that moment a lot in his final days uh, evident i mean it, to the point where he he took his own his own life yeah. and so uh, this goes on saying both sides have confirmed that Roberta's letter does not have a date on it and the laundries have maintained it has nothing to do with Gabby Petito. And so what the other thing is, too, is. So supposedly, according to Roberta, she gave this letter to Brian before they left. So we are to believe that Brian took that letter, took the letter with him on his trip, uh, committed the crime, came back took the letter out of the van or wherever it was in his belongings and then put it in his room. So that's the thing is that he abandoned the van. No, no, no. He, he, I, I thought he drove it back home. I, thought, I remember them saying that somebody picked him up on the side of the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walking. Yeah, that was... Uh, so just to kind of go all the way back, um, there was a person that picked him up uh, during the times where it's believed that um, Gabby had gone, something had happened, and dropped him back off at the camper. Oh, okay, and, okay. Yeah, they dropped him off back at the camper. They had picked him up um, up north. That I believe it was like Jackson something. Or he was going to Jackson something, and then he asked to be dropped off at the camper. He had been hiking, supposedly, for two days. Um, but so... I just don't, I don't understand that. Like, like, I don't understand where that makes sense. Like how Brian is going to take this letter before his trip, take it on his trip. That talks about bringing a shovel, bury the body, getting out of jail, things like that. And all those things happen. And he keeps that letter with him. A letter that, you know, if Roberta's, saying is true it's just coincidental it's pretty pretty damning coincidental evidence you know what i mean yeah yeah i'm calling a big bs on this story for roberta laundry um the fbi gave gave it to me i still have it berlinito said of the letter to the, in a message to wfla.com in december don't get caught up in the hype context is everything Riley has filed a letter to be part of the discovery process in the lawsuit that Tito's parents have filed against Laundries and Berlinito. A court hearing specifically on whether the letter will be admissible as evidence has not been scheduled. Uh, Roberta, letter, Roberta, Roberta Laundry's letter as filed in Sarasota County Circuit Court is below. So I'll read that real quick. It says, uh, I, Roberta Laundry, am a defendant in the above styled cause, and I do by hereby swear or affirm that I fully understand the meaning of all the terms in this affidavit. I wrote the letter requested by the plaintiff's second request for production. I wrote the letter to my son, Brian Laundry, on or about the end of May, 2021. Although I do not know the exact date I wrote the letter, I know I do know that I wrote it and gave it to Brian before Brian and Gabby left Florida to, for New York, which was on June 2nd, 2021. Brian and Gabby went from Florida to New York before they went out West. The purpose of the letter was to reach out to Brian while he and I were experiencing a difficult period in our relationship. Brian and I have been a very open and commutative relationship. And in the months prior to the trip, our relationship had become strained. Brian and I shared a love, uh, a love for stories and some of the language in the letter was using similar phrases to describe the depth of a mother's love. Uh, the two books that come in mind are The Runaway 
Bunny and Little Bear. I wonder if any of those have something about breaking people out of jail, digging the hole for bodies or something of like that nature. Any of those two books that she says that are coming to mind. We'll look into that. In addition, Gabby had given Brian a book called Burn After Writing, which contained printed questions to which the reader responds by writing their answers on the page. The back of the book instructs the reader to create a secret book and then destroy by Burn After Writing. The bottom of the back cover says, Write, burn, repeat. Brian, Gabby, and I often joke about this book and the importance of being able to express yourself. If I were embarrassed or simply did not want anyone to know your thoughts or feelings, then the book offered a perfect solution by telling you to burn it. This is where my message uh, to Brian came from. And I wrote on the cover of the letter to Brian Burn after reading. In short, I was trying to connect to Brian and repair a relationship as he was planning to leave home. And I had hoped this letter would remind him how much I loved him. So what she's basically saying is that in that book, if you wrote something that you didn't like, you can burn it, right? And you don't have to worry about it. So yeah. I guess what she's saying is if you don't like what I wrote, what, what, what you read, you can burn this letter. And I guess when she says that I, um, you know, I'm pleased that he still had the letter means that he didn't burn it. So I guess it doesn't mean that he didn't dislike it. I think that's, that's her point of view, right? Yeah. <clears throat> That's, you know, she's always going to protect her son because that's her son. Like, right. Like, uh, um, you know, Dahmer's dad was always protecting his, his son because that was his son. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So we'll finish this. It goes, there were, there were some other phrases that I used in a letter that was that are not found in the books I share with Brian as a child. However, these phrases were common enough in our circle of friends and family described. Uh, you can turn in the most troubling times of your life. Well, I used the words that seem to have connection with Brian's actions and his taking of Gabby's life. I never would have fathomed that the events that unfolded months later between Brian and Gabby would reflect the words of my letter. The words in the letter could never have been a comment on the tragic situation as they were written so many months before. My words to Brian were meant to convey my love and support for my son through a lighthearted and quirky reminder that my love for him was not as diminished or could not be shaken by the miles of separation we soon would be faced with. And so I don't understand the lighthearted and quirky reminder being burying somebody, getting a shovel and getting somebody out of jail. Sound lighthearted and quirky to you, Blue? No, I don't. <laughs> the letter I write my daughter is like, I love you, have a fun trip, and call when you can, you know? Like, yeah. And not bury and break out of jail. Nah, not like yeah. I'm going to Mexico. We can't even can't walk out of some of those jails. But we'll see. It goes on to say, although a few of the words in the letter are being quoted as others having connection to this case, all the words taken together in the context of the reason of the letter was written show that there is no connection. In addition, there has been some speculation that this letter was in Brian's possession or in his backpack when he died, insinuating that I gave it to him as he left home on September 13, 2021. But that is not true because the FBI had the letter in their possession and questioned the members of, the of my family about it prior to October 20th, 2021, when my husband and I found Brian's remains in the reserve. I repeat that letter I wrote to Brian before he left with Gabby and their faithful trip was nothing more than a private communication between myself and my son, and I never expected anyone else to read it in the same in some way. I did not want anyone else to read it as I know it. It's not the type of letter a mother writes to an adult son, and I did not want to embarrass Brian. This is why I wrote Burn After Reading on the envelope, and I knew that Brian would know what that meant. I am now appreciative that he actually kept it. Signed, Roberta Laundry. Now, um, I don't think so, man. I think that they had this certain code and they had certain stuff and, you know, they read a lot of books and maybe they did have certain phrases, but I think that he sent, she sent it to him um, during the time that he was there before he went missing because he became, you know, distant from his family in those last few days. And I think that was an attempt to, you know, try to tell him that everything's going to be okay, that, you know, we'll go bury the body if we need to go get you out of jail, the whole nine yards, you know, doing whatever it willing to take. But, you, you know, in case it was found or whatnot, maybe she'd have to have a reason for. Um, so it was written down in a certain way. You get what I'm saying? I don't disagree with her and doing it in that way. I do because somebody found it and now she's in trouble. All she had to do was 
talk to him. Yeah. It was at, it was at her house. I mean, maybe he didn't want to talk, but I got the keys to every door in my house. Yeah. Yeah, they did act. See, that's the thing, too. That, that's what brings me to believe that. Um, and it's just my opinion. I think that that he went and he told them what was up. I think he told them what had happened. And I think that the parents knew and could see in him that he was going to go and, you know, take his own life at one point. You know what I mean? I think they could see the signs there. They weren't going to work. They were, you know, police media were outside the house. So they were trapped inside. The only people that they had to each other was each other. And so in my opinion, I think that, um, um, I think that's exactly what had occurred. You know, I, I think he told them, I felt that the parents probably felt that they were going to try to reach out to him, try to, t try to get through to him. Maybe talking wasn't working. So they wrote a, lo a letter and, um, whether he read it or not, maybe he didn't even read the letter. He may have just put it in his drawer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And never even read the letter and, you know, and, and gone and did what he did. And so, uh, I, I, I truly think that the laundry parents know more and have known more for a very long time. What do you think, Blue? I mean, it's hard to tell, man. It's hard to tell, but, We'll find out when the case comes up and see if it comes out, you know, we'll see if the truth comes out when that civil case comes out. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, man. When this civil case comes up, we'll see what's else in that letter and what other, what other information that they may have to prove that, that the, that the laundries had information before Gabby's body was found. Um, do you have any, um, any uh any final thoughts before we uh, call it a show a little over an hour now yeah i just want to say you know my thoughts and prayers go out to all the people that we talked about that passed away but right now uh, the most current ones the ones that are here are still grieving because it just happened is uh the ones that got kidnapped in mexico is that two of them already passed one's in critical condition that you know they, they don't know if they're gonna make it so, you know, my thoughts and prayers go out to your families. They decided to go to Mexico to get some surgeries that, and medications that probably, if uh, the U.S. can work on trying to make healthcare a lot more affordable for its own people, then we wouldn't have to travel across, you know, to another country to see medical help. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. You know, our thoughts and prayers go out there. We just spoke about today. Um, Jaime comes in saying, "Then you can watch the other ones on the body." Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I thought that was pretty. I thought that was insane, man. How fast they found Brian. Brian's remains. Um, but he was supposedly in the exact same spot that they told him that he was going to be at. You know, the laundry's told spoke. Court. I mean, we don't know. We don't know the truth, right? We only know that it's been stated that the uh, the laundries told the the authorities that that was the location that he would be in. So who knows? But I want to say thank you to everybody that's uh, you know caught the show. I know I'm not my normal chippy self, but I've had like two hours of sleep, guys. So I'm working on it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give it up to Big Blue for for coming in clutch uh, while he's supposed to be sleeping. Get some rest, bro. <laughs> and y'all have a great day. We'll see y'all later. Peace. I'll take care, guys. <laughs>